Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading the psalm responsively by half verse. 
<clears throat> the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And the, of the, Lord. the Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of the righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected, this is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. You are my God, and I will thank you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. A reading from the Revelation of John. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priest serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one who lived and died and rose again. Amen. Amen. When the resurrected Lord came to appear to the disciples on that first day, the wounds on his side and his hands were still visible. This always surprises me. We are not talking about scars here. We are talking about open wounds. Thomas puts his hand in the side of Jesus. We were just here last Sunday celebrating the victory of Christ over the cross. But here is Jesus today, certainly alive, but the suffering that he has endured is still very much in view. And in fact, this is how the disciples recognize him, by his wounds. So in the midst of our Easter joy, visits from the Easter Bunny, our shouts of Alleluia, we forget the precariousness of that first Easter. Jesus' resurrection happened in a world that was hurting. And on that first Easter morning, the sun didn't come up to a world suddenly freed from oppression and poverty and death. The disciples were hiding in the upper room. They were afraid. They were afraid for their lives. But then Jesus appeared to them with a gash in his side and holes in his hands. And you just wonder, were they thinking, this is the victorious Christ? Truly looking like he is fresh from the grave? We claim that the resurrection of Christ ushered in a new creation, a remaking of the world, yet this new birth is very fragile. It's vulnerable. It's unfinished. 
This was the good news that the disciples received. And it was wonderful and surprising, but it was not mission accomplished. It becomes very clear that Jesus is counting on the disciples. He's counting on us to continue his mission of healing the world. He sends the disciples out into the world to judge and to forgive. He says, go out and tell the world that life is showing up in the most unlikely places. The disciples were commissioned as witnesses to Jesus' death and also witnesses to his new life. This is captured so beautifully in the words of our collect for the day, this prayer that gathers up our intentions for the day. It says that on, in Easter, in the Easter mystery, a new covenant of reconciliation is created for us and with us. A new covenant of reconciliation. We prayed, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess in their faith. Jesus showing up with the wounds on his hands and in his side is showing forth with his whole life, with his whole body, the work that God does, this healing work, this resurrection work. So the question for us then is how do we show forth our faith in our lives? How do we live this good news for others? And I think it has something to do with letting our wounds be visible, just like Jesus did. Of course, it's not easy to walk around with your woundedness on display. All of us are wounded in some way. Most of us are wounded. Are wo most, for most of us, our wounds are not visible. We have them on the inside. And none want to be defined by our wounds. We don't want people to know about what is weakest in us or most vulnerable in our lives. We want to be known for our strengths, for our gifts, for what we have to give. Yet Jesus is inviting us into something a little different. He shows up, this perfecter of our faith, and he is recognized by his wounds. So what does this mean for us? How can we understand this? One way to look at this is as an act of resistance. And I think all of us who have gone through suffering, when you start to feel better or when you're able to be present to the world, you feel this sense of, this is not going to get me down. Jesus points to his hands and his side and he says to the disciples, they thought they'd killed me. They thought that they had ended our ministry they thought that we would be so scared that we would not tell the story. But not so. You are strengthened by the Holy Spirit, so go and tell this story. Know that wounds and all, you are empowered to be the messengers of the good news. Make sure that the history of God's work in the world is remembered that everyone knows all that God has done to renew the world. Another way to understand these wounds is as a theological claim. In Jesus, God has redeemed not just our souls, but even this old flesh, this body. From the very first articulations of the faith, early Christians spoke of the resurrection of the body. They believed God meant to raise the flesh too. The God who had made their bodies and declared them good would not have a change of heart on them. Wherever we are going, when it's all over, our bodies are going too. We forget that fleshiness of our faith. We're more comfortable thinking about our spiritual bodies. But God claims our whole selves. Wounds and all. 
Today we are celebrating Second Chance Sunday with our prison ministry here at St. Philip's. This is a celebration that is a part of a nationwide program called Prison Fellowship. Prison Fellowship was, was started by Charles Chuck Colson, who you may remember as Richard Nixon's hatchet man. During the process of his pleading guilty and serving a term in prison, Colson became a Christian and he dedicated his life to serving incarcerated people and their families. His life, his redemption, his reconciliation is a witness to us that the resurrected Christ changes lives and that wounds, maybe even especially wounds that we cause our own selves, that are self-inflicted, that those wounds can be redeemed for God's work in the world. Just because we make mistakes doesn't mean that God doesn't want to use us in the work of the gospel. So on this Second Chance Sunday, we remember that 70 million Americans, that is one in three, that was a shocking statistic to me, has a criminal record. And that the fact that you have a criminal record can limit your ability to get a job, to get a student loan. It even could limit your ability to get a professional license as a manicurist or a barber. And this creates what Prison Fellowship calls a second prison. After you've paid your debt by serving time, you come into the world, but you're not able to move forward in your life because of your convictions on your record. Of course, this makes no sense because somebody who's unable to move forward in their life because of that prior conviction, even though they've served their time, that's just gonna create hopelessness that just causes more crime. But we serve a God of hope who invites us to see the dignity in every human being and our pr prison ministry here at St. Philip's is inviting us to find ways to help those who are newly returned from prison, to help them to find employment, housing, and life skills. So if you would like to help, I hope you will get in touch with Libby Fisher, who's here this morning, or the others in our prison ministry who have this dream of finding ways for those who have served their time to move forward in their lives as God's beloved. This is what it means to carry on Christ's mission in the world, to receive that commission from God. It is what it means to live into your covenant of reconciliation. And as happened to the community of disciples who moved from that fear behind the locked doors out into the world and created a worldwide church. Think about that, going from fear behind locked doors out into the world. God empowers us, too, to do amazing things. And our ministry begins, as it did with Jesus and the disciples, with making our wounds visible and allowing others to touch our wounds with the healing touch of love. I know that each of us knows the feeling of a wounded body and a wounded soul. I'm sure that all of us know what it means to make a mistake and to pay, pay for that mistake with consequences. But I also have a feeling that we all know a little bit about new life, about what it feels to heal, to mend a relationship, to have a second chance. One might say we all know what it means to live resurrection. So our invitation today is to tell your story, to share with others your wounds, to witness to your healing, to witness to your empty tomb, to witness that Jesus is being raised in you. 
The invitation today is also to offer that second chance to those who have paid their debts to society and, to simply, and who are simply seeking the ability to live their lives and to get their lives back on track. With the disciples, we are commissioned to be witnesses to these things. So go out and tell your neighbors, tell the world that Jesus is alive, that we as a community are alive, and by telling that story, you will give flesh to God's body, and you will give life to God's word. So go claim your second chance, and then offer it to others. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reaffirming our faith in the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father <clears throat> to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is true, the Lord is risen. Rejoicing that love overcomes death and offers us new life and light, let us pray together. Make your ways known upon the earth, O oh God. And your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness as we pray for the Anglican Church in Papua New Guinea and in our Anglican Communion and in our Diocese, St. Mark's Gastonia. And help us serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation. Let not the needy, O oh God, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Bless us with generous hands and hearts in our community. And lead us truly hear those who disagree. Restore our vision to see again the wonders of your world. That we may help and make real your dream of the stars. Give hope to the hopeless and comfort to the troubled. Remembering your work of healing, bless those in our fellowship. We need your care and our support. Bless Allison and John Bateman, Taylor and Brendan Elliott, Magdalena and Christian Funk, Jessica and Kevin McKeg, Kate and James, Neil, Elizabeth, Richardson and Bradley Riddle, and Lexi and Jamie Valencia, who will soon be bringing new life into our world. Let 
Into your hands, we give Patricia Brown, Murray Comer, Susan Sunflower, and Mary Diskin, sister of Billy Begg, and all the dying and the departed. And pray that they may rest in your eternal light. In all these things, make us instruments of your peace. I invite you now into a time of quiet reflection during which your intentions are invited silently or aloud. We remember all prisoners, those who work in prisons, those who have been released and are seeking a new life. God of perfect love and mercy, look on us, your children, as we seek to build your kingdom in our communities. Give us the gifts we need to build one another up, to be good neighbors, helping us all to meet our potential. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us that we might know your forgiveness and peace. Help us to show your mercy to one another as we seek the best you have to offer for each one of us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. God, you are the first light, cutting through the void. You are the final light, which we shall enjoy forever. Help us to welcome the light and walk in it always. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Beware, this is one of those Sundays when there are a lot of announcements. So buckle your seatbelts and uh, hold on. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Rolls. I'm rector here at St. Philip's, and I'm so happy that you have joined us in worship today, um, especially if you're new among us. Thank you for being here. Um, if you've joined us on Facebook Live, we're so glad that you joined us this morning. Um, are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other special occasions that we want to mark with prayer today? Wow. Okay. All right. Well, remember, you can always look at the back of your bulletin to see who it is in the community who is celebrating a birthday. Um, or is having an anniversary, and you can um, pray for them all week as they uh, celebrate this week. So we have a, a special guest on the organ bench today, Mr. Ted Stewart. We're so glad you're here, Ted. And Uh, Ted is going to be with us uh, a lot over the next few weeks as we enter into this transition um, with uh, Dr. Timothy Sloan's retirement. Um, Tim's last Sunday with us will be next Sunday when we um, welcome our bishop. We're also going, the choir is going to be singing the, um, the piece of music that was commissioned um, in celebration for Tim um, during the offertory. It's the, the world um, 
premiere of this piece of music, so it's a really exciting time. Um, as well as, of course, we're also having confirmations and receptions and reaffirmation of baptismal vows. It's going to be an exciting um, Sunday, next Sunday. But it is also Tim's last Sunday with us, and I want to remind you that we are gathering what we call a purse, which is a, a monetary gift for Tim um, in celebration of his 15 years of service at St. Philip's. So if you would like to contribute to that, um, to that purse, uh, you can make the check out to St. Philip's and on the memo line, just put Tim Sloan um, and, that, and then we will present that to him um, on uh, May 22nd when we sell. He's gonna come back for his celebration, but we're gonna celebrate him on May 22nd. Just so much going on. Um, he's gonna come back for that celebration. Okay, so more about music. So we're in this time of transition, we're entering into this time of transition, and as we pray and think about music at St. Philip's, um, I want your feedback, and your vestry wants your feedback. So we have um, tried some new things as we've come out of COVID, we've had some, some changes and some new things, and I think it's time for us to put a little pause and to, to get uh, feedback from the congregation. So there are two ways that you can do that. Um, there's multiple ways that you can do that because you can always come and talk to me, but there are two uh, official ways that you can do that. Um, you, there's a survey that has been sent out by email, um, and you can fill that online survey out um, that asks about your, uh, your, uh, what, you, what kind of music you like to worship with, and, um, and um, it has lots of questions. So anyway, you can fill out the survey. If you have not gotten that in your email inbox, you can always call the church office, and, they will, and Jill will help you um, access that survey. The other thing is uh, we are having what we're calling go-to groups. These are um, facilitated feedback groups. And we're going to um, several different uh, groups within the parish. Um, and those will be on the 8th, May 8th, and May 15th. Um, on May 8th, they will be after each service. So after the 8 o'clock service, and then after the, um, what is this, 10.30 service. And then, uh, and, and then on the 15th, it will be a combined um, gathering during the adult formation hour. So, uh, and it will be in Miller Hall. So you can come in person to uh, give your feedback at one of these facilitated groups. Um, so there you go. I want to hear from you. Let me know what you're thinking um, about worship at St. Philip's and, um, and particularly around music. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next subject, which is Abby, yay, Abby. Abby Glass, our new youth and children and family minister. We are, um, and all, you, most of you know that we, Abby, we're sharing Abby. We have a joint ministry um, with uh, the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. And today we are commissioning our two congregations. This evening we're gonna commission Abby to this new role among us that she's already um, started and, and um, is already doing, but we're going to commission her, um, and the service will start at 5 o'clock at the Lutheran Church, which is the church that's right across from Ingalls, right by the middle school. I know this church well. I drive by it all, every day. So it's right across from Ingalls. The service will start at 5 o'clock. It's a progressive celebration, then we're going to move. After the service, we're going to move here for a reception for the party. So that's what St. Philip's does well, right? Yeah. So, so we'll move here for the party um, and for, for dinner. So uh, do join us as we celebrate Abby. Um, so I did mention the bishop's going to be here next Sunday. Next Sunday, when the bishop is here, he is going to be at adult formation hour at 915 in Miller Hall. So he'll be there with us then, and he will be in the second service, in the 1030 service. Starting next Sunday, the 8 o'clock service will be um, a spoken word service. And we're, it's going to continue to be a spoken word service through the transition, at least. So um, just know if you want music, come 1030. If you want spoken word, come at 8. And um, 
the bishop will not be at the 8 o'clock service next Sunday, but he will be at the adult formation and the 1030 service. Um, I warned you, right? It goes on. So, blood drive. We're having a blood drive on um, May 2nd. So it's coming up May 2nd. You sign up online at the Red Cross. If you, wanna, if you want help doing that, you can call Jill. She'll help you sign up for the blood drive. The other exciting news is that Laundry Day is coming back. I haven't experienced this with you all, but this is a pre-COVID ministry where we help do laundry with the community um, at a, a local laundromat. Um, it's a beautiful ministry of relationship building and service. Um, so uh, please take the opportunity to serve in this way. Um, you can sign up by emailing or calling Diane Livingston, or you can, we have in what we call our easel alley, the uh, hallway outside the offices, we have a sign up there that you can sign up to serve um, at that ministry. So the first day back is May 19th, so it's coming up. All right. There's also a pig roast. I'm not going to say any more about that. It's on May 14th, but make plans for that as well. Then, last but not least, the exciting news of our the return of the common cup, the return of wine in our um, reception of Holy Communion. Um, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of instruction. Some of you have heard this before. Um, but first, I want you to know that if you receive in bread only, you are receiving in complete and full communion. So that is still a, a good option. If you would like to receive the bread only, um, that is full communion. If you are receiving the cup, if you're receiving the wine, the, the, uh, the bread will be intincted or dipped into the wine and then placed into your open hand. Um, and so, if you come forward and you want to receive the bread, having been dipped in the wine, you simply put your hands out like a little plate, and we will place it in your hands. Um, if you would like to receive the bread only, you put your hand on your heart to let us know that you want to receive in one kind, and then you can put your hands out once we see that. Um, and that is full communion. And then, last but not least, as always, you can always... Um, if you would like to receive a blessing instead of the elements, you can put your arms over your chest. Everybody asleep? Okay, there you go. Remember all that? <laughs> the, that's right, the baseball signals. You never knew church could be so complicated. So um, now, my friends, hear these words of Scripture. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty.
All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Philip and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, 
for we all share in the one bread. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Let us pray with those who are watching from home. <clears throat> Gracious God, since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. 